Hi, I'm Esteban, and it's been an exciting day three of the Robo Boats competition. All the teams got in the water today and competed autonomously in the course. They had one run today, some of them got in a second run, and the rest will finish tomorrow morning before the finals. Let's recap what happened today. Having the best score going into day three, Michigan chose to go first. After a few failed attempts, the team made some changes on the fly and were able to get through the gates and pick up the ring, but got lost on the way to the blue buoy. They'll have another run tomorrow. So how'd that run go for you guys? Oh, it went really well. Uh, we had a little bit of trouble getting off the dock and getting through the start gates at first. Uh, we think we isolated there, and uh, we're looking forward to our next uh, run. On the second attempt of their first run, University of Rhode Island nearly completed the course by going through the speed gates, circling the buoy, navigating six channel buoys, and partial rotation around the second blue buoy. Although the boat was unable to find the subsequent orange targets, it did manage to find a spectator with orange shorts to spray water at. Yes. We're looking forward to their second run tomorrow morning. Looked like a great run to me. Were you guys happy with it? Fantastic run, fantastic first run. Uh, I mean, everything really came together today. And I think uh, the only thing we're probably going to change for tomorrow is uh, the targets have changed location. So we're just going to work on some algorithms and hopefully things go well. Think you'll complete the whole course? Well, we did pretty well today, so that's a pretty good indication of where we're going to be. Virginia Tech had no problem with the speed gates or ring, but despite making multiple changes to the GPS and LiDAR between attempts on their first run, they were unable to circle the blue buoy. But they did manage to continue through two channel buoys. On their second run, they were able to circle the buoy, but did not make it to the channel. So Paul, how'd it go for the Hokies? I think our run went very well. Uh, we uh, went through the speed gates and got the ring perfectly fine, probably about four times, so that's not a problem. Our biggest problem is trying to get to the GPS point over at that blue buoy and circling it. So that's what we're going to work on this afternoon. Hopefully by tonight we'll have that ready to go. Villanova had to restart the power on their boat moments before putting in the water, which deleted the video code memory. It took 18 of their 20 minutes to reload the code, leaving them time for only one attempt for their first run. Unfortunately, the boat wasn't able to find the gates. Software issues plagued them on their second run as well, leading to the same result. On their first run, Georgia Tech Marine was struggling with an inaccurate compass setting, but were able to fix it with two minutes left on the clock and made it through the speed gates. On the second run, they lowered their vehicle's weight and increased the thrust, getting some extra points, but matched the first run's results on the course. Going slow and steady, the U.S. Naval Academy was able to get through the gates and grab the ring, but not having color recognition, the boat got lost in the channel looking for the blue buoy. The wind had picked up for their second run, making things more difficult, so they'll be going with the score from the first. It's a decent run. We have some things to change, probably uh, lower to some distances, so we'll be able to circle the buoy and go into the channel. Miraculously, ODU Mechanical was able to rebuild their electrical system last night after a short almost put them out of the competition. The boat didn't make it through the gate on either of their two runs, but under the circumstances, just getting it running again was a feat in itself. After losing their boat's computer system yesterday, Embry-Riddle Aeronautical improvised with an off-the-shelf laptop. Although it added extra weight to the vehicle and their compass died minutes before their run, it was enough to get them through one of the speed gates. They'll have another attempt in the morning. So you guys have been working through a couple of challenges for sure during this competition. How'd your first qualifying run go? Um, well, the fact that we made it in the water and ran is great. Actually, about 10 minutes before our run, we lost our compass, so we did just a little bit of dead reckoning. As you guys saw, the ballasting for it is a little off with the laptop in there and the batteries and the payload. So tonight we're going to try to figure that out and hopefully we'll run tomorrow. Last year's winners, UCF, had an interesting first attempt on their first qualifying run when their boat locked on to a passing duck. But their third attempt was a keeper, making it through the gates, around the blue buoy, and through two channel buoys. It'll be fun to see if they can hold on to their crown tomorrow. So our reigning champions, UCF, just got out of the water. How's your first run go? Uh, we're very happy with our performance. Uh, we were able to correctly identify a lot of the objects of interest in the water, which means that we should have a repeatable performance for those parts. We had some camera issues uh, there in the middle for the buoy nab, and then we also had some GPS issues at the end. But um, you know, we can tweak those values, but we think we've got the first part locked down. It can only improve from here. FAU put into the water for their required thrust test, but then mysteriously pulled out of the water. They'll go for broke during their second run tomorrow morning. All right, so it looks like uh, your first run had some struggles. What was going on? 
Well, we've been dealing with uh, remote control electrical issues ever since we started. So uh, pretty much today, all we're doing is our thrust test while we iron out the rest of our issues because we don't want to stress anything and break anything before our final chance at qualifiers tomorrow. So we're going to kind of take our time today and get things straightened out, and then tomorrow we'll go for the big one. Okay, so it was a strategic move for you guys. Exactly. The Taiwanese team from National Chung Kung University had some balance issues yesterday, but worked them out in the pool overnight. Unfortunately, an underpowered thruster problem gave them mixed results trying to get through the gates. They'll try again in the morning. Georgia Tech Savannah Robotics sped through the gates on their first qualifying run, but were unable to find the ring. They'll be making adjustments tonight and are hoping for a better run in the morning. So were you happy with your first run? Uh, yes, we're pretty happy with it. We made it through the speed gates. We had some problems with uh, one of our sensors drifting and freezing, so we're going to be uh, trying to fix that problem and, and at least get the ring the next go around. And finally, ODU Technology had a disappointing first qualifying run, unable to make it through the speed gate after six attempts. Hopefully, they can pull it together tomorrow. Well, it looked like a rough first run, guys. What went wrong? Um, Particularly, it was the vision system detection at the moment. It, I think the red is getting out of view of the camera, and it doesn't know its heading is changing at the moment, so that's the main issue that we're going to try and fix before tomorrow. Well, all the teams have gone home, so that's it for today. Tomorrow morning, though, we'll be finishing the qualifying runs, and then the live webcast of the finals will be taking place in the afternoon. You can catch that at 1 p.m. Eastern on RoboBoats.org. And for any other info you need, same site, RoboBoats.org. See you tomorrow at 1 for the finals.